Welcome to 2024. And for those of you interested in Egypt, how is that country entering the new year? And what should we expect going forward? Well, Egypt at the start of 2024 looks rather compromised. Unsurprisingly, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, in power in Egypt since he overthrew the Islamist Mohamed Morsi in the coup back in 2013, was re-elected as president again for another six-year term. The election was fast-tracked because holding it in 2024 amid a projected worsening economic crisis could have constituted a bigger political problem for President Sisi. Election authorities reported that the latter won his third presidential election with 89.6% of the vote, a figure that obviously makes no sense, as many accuse the president of having committed massive election fraud. As President Assisi enters his third term, what kind of problems should we expect going forward? And what are some of the areas to watch in 2024 and beyond? Well, firstly, there is the domestic security. Although the insurgency and the Sinai Peninsula has been somewhat curtailed, mm -hmm. it remains a significant risk across Egypt, particularly in North Sinai. ISIS affiliates in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula continue to pose a certain threat to the Sisi regime. In its immediate neighborhood, the country faces heightened security problems near its borders, be they along the Israel and Gaza border to the east, Libya to the west, and obviously Sudan to the south. The country is surrounded by unstable neighbors. Let me go to the east first, where Egypt has concerns about the displacement of the Palestinians and regional security issues. The country is also dealing with tensions due to Israel's concerns about underground tunnels beneath the corridors that potentially link Gaza to the Sinai Peninsula. The Israeli government has been quietly pushing for Egypt to admit large numbers of Gazans despite not publicly calling for the, such measures. The move has been met with resistance from Egypt, uh, outright rejection actually, which has as you know, backed Israel's blockade of Gaza since uh, Hamas took over in 2007. Egypt has rejected allowing an influx of refugees from Gaza, citing concerns over the displacement of Palestinians, and, and all these issues are not likely to vanish anytime soon. Now, since fighting continues, Egypt will continue to face the same problems going forward along the Israel-Gaza border. In this case, the Egyptian diplomacy has no answers to these problems. Staying in the east, the Houthis have been playing a significant role in Egypt's security. Based in Yemen, the Houthis' potential to disrupt maritime traffic in the Red Sea poses direct threat to the Suez Canal, which, as you know, is a vital economic lifeline for Egypt. The Houthis targeting the interests of Israel, which is a partner of Egypt, is another concern. These attacks could potentially strain Egypt's relations with Israel and complicate regional security dynamics. Moving to the west, the Egyptian-Libyan border is over 1,200 kilometers long and is almost entirely open desert, making it difficult, virtually impossible, to secure. The breakdown of the Libyan state, crumbling of border outposts, and the rise of warring militant factions in Libya all threaten Egypt's tenuous internal stability. Egypt is also dealing with an influx of foreign fighters operating in Libya, making its western border a permanent source of concern. Here too, Egypt has no diplomatic response. To the south, Egypt is dealing with the fallout of the Sudanese crisis, with many Sudanese fleeing Sudan's capital Khartoum, and some ending up in Egypt. The management of Egypt's borders with Sudan is a crucial concern for Cairo, as in the past, Egypt has suffered serious consequences from the infiltration of militant groups and undocumented migrants and smuggling of arms and, and drugs. Secondly, social unrest could lead to more instability, and part of the problem is the worsening health profile of the Egyptian population as insecurity and poverty 
continue to expand. And more importantly, setting aside bad governance, Egypt is grappling with a profound economic crisis that's already disrupting the domestic economic and foreign policies of the country. The crisis can contribute to deepening public discontent in 2024 and exacerbate social instability. Financially, the country is bleeding billions of dollars, coming from the fact that it has a trillion dollar debt. The situation is so drastic that Egypt has announced a sweeping program of spending cuts in exchange for hundreds of millions of dollars. The IMF allocated it as part of a major economic rescue package, which I assume will have little to no positive impact on Egypt in the long run. Subsidies that help millions of Egyptians access cheap rice, oil, and sugar have been reduced and will be reduced further in 2024, increasing the political risk on the Sisi regime, which has been making strategic mistakes such as really spending $50 billion on building a new capital. Across the country, families have reduced their consumption of meat, medicines, clothing, etc. Bread, rice, and cooking oil are among the items that are in short supply because when, when people are unable to buy pricey products like beef, they naturally shift to the items they can afford and lower cost items, therefore creating more demand for the low priced products and a new cycle of shortages for these products. With the debt exceeding a trillion dollars, Egypt can no longer meet its various financial obligations. Egyptian authorities recently announced that they would delay various projects that required significant borrowing in US dollars and that they would reduce travel, training, and conferences for civil servants, for example. These decisions were made after the government agreed to privatize dozens of state assets and selling them to international investors. The IMF has, in fact, conditioned its aid of $3 billion loan over the next four years on measures to reduce the role of the state and the privatization of companies belonging to the military as well as the adoption of a more flexible exchange mechanism. Even with the $700 million in loan expected from the IMF this year, Egypt will have to speed up its privatization program to fill a financing gap of more than $5 billion. It will have eventually to sell $2 billion in public sector assets and borrow more than a $1 billion each from the World Bank and China Development Bank to help close the gap. The Egyptian government attributes this economic chaos to the COVID-19 pandemic, which clearly did hurt the tourism sector. But that's not the end of the story. They also blame the war in Ukraine, which sent the prices of raw materials and agricultural products soaring, pushing the country into full economic crisis. The Egyptian pound has weakened against the US dollar, making imports of wheat, electronics, cars, and other products much more expensive. As a result, annual inflation reached 21.3% in December, a five-year high, according to the government. The Egyptian currency, the pound, continues to fall against the US dollar, down 44% over the past year. A dollar was last worth between 30 and 31 Egyptian pounds. The decision to delay state projects risks penalizing the construction of this huge new capital on the outskirts of Cairo. Authorities are trying to impose restrictions in the use of foreign money. With the exception of the foreign ministry, the security services, and the military, all spending involving foreign currencies will go through a special authorization from the country's finance ministry. So, as President Sisi looks set to govern over the next six years, he will undoubtedly be facing an extraordinary situation as nearly as $100 billion in foreign and domestic debt will come due for Egypt over the next four years. Egypt will have to repay $155.7 billion to foreign creditors, according to the country's central bank. So as you look at 2024 specific to Egypt, it's difficult to see some silver lining or the end of the tunnel. We should expect the year to be a pretty difficult one, and we're hoping that eventually the country find a path to stability and economic recovery. And until our next discussion, thank you for your time and goodbye.